Hello and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Dragon's Dogma 2 and we are doing another armor video. Today it's for everybody's favorite class, the Trickster. So we're doing the top five best Trickster armor sets. But before we dive into that, I think you should do your uh, civic duty and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So you see that little red subscribe button, why don't you go ahead and click on that. And while you're at it, personalize your uh, notifications, set those to all. That way you can be notified whenever I upload another fantastic video just like this one. And just know that you're doing a good deed by subscribing because you're helping me get to 100,000 subscribers. But with all that being said, let's now dive on into the actual meat of this video. And so if for some reason this is the first you've seen out of this series, I am going through for each vocation and doing a top five unique armor sets for that vocation. So to do that, I tried to emphasize stats because obviously stats are very important like a game like this. We also try very hard to make the outfits look good, but sometimes it's hard given what we're working with. Uh, I think I usually do a pretty good job. And they also obviously have to be something that that vocation can use. We're not using mods that allow you to use any type of armor or anything like that. So this one is specifically for the trickster and what I did is I went through and I collected all the armor pieces, upgraded them with the dwarven upgrades and then the dragon forged upgrades and then made these outfits. So let's just dive on in and start off with the first of these five outfits. And so you can see here we're looking at the first one. I call it the enigmatic persecutor. This one is made up of the following items. The persecutor's horns. A fearsome helmet affixed with a horned skull. The wearer becomes fury incarnate it, meeting all manner of creatures with unflinching authority. The enigmatic robe, a garment held to have been worn by a mountain ascetic. The exposed torso supposedly assists with deepening meditation. The jewel woven sandals, sandals interwoven with jewels imbued with prayers. Many wielders of magic find that concentrated prayer fortifies their powers. And the velvet cape, a cape cut from the from a fabric that is smooth to the touch. Subtle stitching in creates an impression of modest sincerity. And so this one, I mean, it had the exposed midriff. I thought it looked stupid, which is why I used the velvet cape. Maybe you really like the exposed midriff and then maybe you use something else, but I think this one looks pretty good the way I designed it. Uh, stats for this one are a total weight of 3.93 kilograms, defense of 343, magic defense of 374, and a knockdown resistance of 243, making it just overall the worst on this list stat-wise, but if you know anything about the armor in this game, you'll know that those are considerably high stats, which is just uh, a great example of how, for some reason, the trickster got ridiculous good armor considering how bad the rest of their class is. So yeah, that is uh, stat-wise pretty decent, but the worst on this list. Appearance-wise, like I said, I did the best I could. Uh, we're working with a lot of purple here, so if you like purple, this is probably a good-looking outfit for you. I think the horns on the helmet look a little bit over the top, but given the class and the magical conjuring nature that you're going with here, I think it makes sense. So that is the Enigmatic Persecutor, our fifth one. Let's go move on to number four. All right, so at number four, we have the Uncanny Saint, which is made up of the Uncanny any eyes, a hood that fully shrouds the wearer's face, the thin fabric is imbued with prayers and patterned with many eyes to disquiet and confuse. The mysterious robe, a robe decorated with arcane symbols donning these sigils, is said to grant the wearer heavenly powers. The arena breeches, leg armor that offers an exceptionally tight fit favored by those whose vocation demands intense movement. And Saint Idrium's stole, a stole held to have belonged to Saint Idrium IV, a high priest of Eld, yet ant antiquarians dispute this, claiming it to be a forgery crafted by his progeny. So altogether, the stats for this one are 4.78 kilograms for the weight, uh, 401 for the defense, 456 for the magic defense, and 206 for knockdown resistance. So slightly lower knockdown resistance than the last one we looked at, but higher stats all uh, everywhere else. I think this one definitely looks good for the for the specific vocation. I think it fits the whole vibe of like a priestly encounter type vibe, you know, given that that's what this vocation is. And I think all of the pieces go together rather well. You know, it's got that mystical, mysterious, slightly magical, but you know, maybe religious vibe to it that I think that this vocation is all about. So that is the Uncanny Saint. Let's move on to number three. So our number three outfit is the Edified Non-Entity. This one is made up of the Hood of Non-Entity, a hood that covers the wearer from crown to collar, utterly concealing their gaze and expression to aid them on the path toward inexistence. The edified vestment, a robe crafted from the layered hides of fearsome beasts that have been refined with esoteric techniques, shimmers like sunbeams on a sea of magic. The braided boots, sandal boots comprising strips of tightly wound leather, constrict the wearer's muscles and improve blood flow while on the move. And the saurian scale cape, a cape of layered saurian leather, certain to draw the awe and admiration of all who behold it. So that is all of the pieces altogether. 
when they make the edified non-entity outfit, we have a weight of 4.54 kilograms, a defense of 421, magic defense of 488, and a knockdown resistance of 197. So again, slightly less knockdown resistance than our last outfit, and of course, therefore by extension the one before it, but higher stats for both defense and magic defense, and lower weight. So definitely a very, very good suit of armor stat-wise. Appearance-wise, I like it. It took me a while to find the right balance with this one. I wanted to be able to use all of these items somehow for the trickster roll, and I think that they come together rather well for this one. It's got fairly good coverage. I like the hood of non-entity. I like being able to use that because it is actually a pretty good piece of armor, but I haven't ever found a reason to use it in any of my other outfits. But I think it goes pretty well with this one, and of course the Saurian scale cape ties it all together. Without that, it probably wouldn't look anywhere near as good as it does. So that is the edified non-entity, our number three outfit. Let's move on to number two. All right, our outfit at number two is quite possibly my least favorite looking one, but obviously is quite good stat-wise. This one is called the Totemic Red Wolf. Uh, the items that make up this outfit are the Living Altar, a brutal helmet fashioned from skulls and tusks that turns the wearer into an altar for the slain. For if monsters terrify you, why not become one? The Totemic Shroud, a robe affixed with numerous arcane talismans. The cloth is believed to be the dead shroud of a renowned animist. The Rapturous Raffia Skirt, a garment worn with intoning prayers. On special occasions, every swish of the woven fibers serves to strengthen the wearer's will, and the Red Wolf Cape, a cape fashioned from the pelt of a Red Wolf. It is a trophy worthy of boasting, assuming the wearer felled the beast themselves. And these all come together to give us the Totemic Red Wolf. The weight for this outfit is 4.68 kilograms, the defense is 419, the magic defense is 553, and our knockdown resistance is 232. So pretty dang good stats across the board, uh, already competing for the de best defense of all the outfits we've looked at so far, definitely sealing the spot for the best magic defense, and being very close to the best for knockdown resistance, so stat-wise, it's obviously a fantastic suit of armor. Appearance-wise, like I said, this one was difficult to make work. I wanted to be able to use the Living Altar and the Totemic Shroud pieces in this video, because they're unique and they also have very good stats, but that being said, they are some weird-looking pieces of clothing. So, the Rapturious Raffia Skirt is another really good thing, and I thought it fit looking with this, even though the color doesn't match exactly, and the Red Wolf Cape is a pretty durable and, or I should say, adaptable looking thing, so I thought it tied the outfit together better than anything else I tried. So altogether, I think it looks pretty good, uh, but it's probably my least favorite looking on this list, but stat-wise, it's hard to argue with. So that's the Totemic Red Wolf. Let's move on to our number one best outfit for the Trickster Vocation. And so at our number one spot, we have the Arch Conjurer, which is made up of the Summoner's Crown, a plumed helmet favored by wielders of the arcane arts, visual visualizing its shape is said to improve focus and mental fortitude. The Arch Conjurer's Robe, a robe once worn by Rowan Drac, a trickster who earned the title of Arch Conjurer for such feats as conjuring a dragon that eclipsed mountains. The runic gaiters, gaiters comprising strips of sacred cloth, worn wrapped around the legs inscribed with arcane precepts known to practitioners of illusory magics, and the waterfowl cloak. A short cloak adorned with waterfowl feathers about the neck and shoulders adds a touch of flair to a wearer's journey. Stats for this outfit when all assembled like this is a weight of 4.47 kilograms, defense of 449, magic defense of 589 and a knockdown resistance of 254, giving it the best stats in every single category of, you know, every video or of every suit of armor on this in this video. So stat-wise, pretty dang hard to argue with this. And appearance-wise, I also really like this one. It's quite possibly my favorite. Uh, I'm not huge on the trickster roll in general, but this one does look pretty good together. Uh, the items look like they were made to go together, at least as much as anything in this game can. I really like it. So I think that the Arch Conjurer is a really, really good outfit if you're trying to play as a trickster in a somewhat effective manner, because stat-wise, it's hard to beat, and appearance-wise, it actually looks pretty dang good, which is unique for for this vocation. But that is the last armor set that we're going to be talking about today. And that ends our video. So I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any requests uh, that are armor related, or I guess anything else related to this game, let me know down in the comment section below. But in any case, thanks a ton for watching and have a nice day, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.